Hello everybody and welcome to day three of the Final Fantasy VI Advanced Streams. Uh, my name is Technomagus and we are now on part 13 of Final Fantasy VI. Um, hold on just a minute. Let's get that volume up a little bit so we can actually hear what's going on. Alright, so when we last left off, uh, we had just gotten the airship after... Uh, after Vector, and uh, we're doing a little bit of grinding. Now, I'm sure you noticed my stats are a little whacked out. Um, I can explain that. I actually was introduced to a glitch recently that allow basically allows you to uh, essentially reset the stats of your characters, and I'll demonstrate how it's performed. Um, so, here we have the normal, uh, or here we have the save state that we were just on. Uh, what you're supposed to do uh, now this can be done on the Game Boy Advance version, and I think the PS1 version, but not the original Super Nintendo. But anyway, um, you go into the quick save, you make a quick save, you hit OK. Um, and then instead of continuing, you simply start a new game. Say, oh, OK, hey, that your quick save data will be erased, we don't care about this, go through the intro and all that fun stuff. I've got the fast forward button held down, so that's why it's going so much faster. Alright, now this has to do with the way that the game handles loss, because unlike, um, unlike future Final Fantasies, when you die, you don't actually go back to your last save point, or go back to the title screen. And, well, you actually do go back to your last save point, but what happens is, you get sent back to your last save point, but you keep all of your experience that you've earned. Now, with the memo save, that does some really weird things, because if you notice, we were on... Uh, I was on the island in the future of the game. So now, here we go. So we're going into the fight, so we just get into our first fight, and now to trigger the glitch, all we have to do is just kill ourselves. Which actually takes a bit of time, because while in Magitech Armor, you cannot attack yourself. So the only way to do this is to have Terra cast fire on Biggs and Wedge so that, to weaken them. And then just let the Narshgars actually, you know, kill them. Alright, so... Now, as you notice, since we just died, um, it would take us back to our last save point, but our last save point was on the island of Tamasa. So, when we go back, give it a sec. So now we're back on our last save, and we have, as you notice, Terra's level has been reset to three. Um, but for some reason, her HP and MP have been pretty much maxed out. I'm not sure exactly why the HP and MP are maxed out, but it also uh, it retains her stats that she had at that level. Those were the stats that I had after my last grinding session. Um, I have Terra equipped with the Zone Seek Magicite, which gives plus two magic on level up. So as a result, I now have a level three Terra with stats right, uh, basically equivalent to a level 18 which makes this very easy for maxing out her stats. The problem with this glitch is, you have to do it for each individual character you want to reset this way, meaning you have to re-encounter that character to reset their stats. I went as far as to do it with Locke, and by extension, uh, Mog, because Locke and Mog are introduced at the same point in the game. Um, but I don't, didn't feel like replaying through the entire game to do it again with all the other characters. So that's just, I'm, this is the only time I'm actually going to be doing that with this glitch, um, so that it doesn't, you know, break the game even more. But now I have a max health Terra that's pretty much going to last me through the end of the game. Um, Alright, so anyway, uh, let's get back to the story. So when we last left off, 
We had just raided Vector and gotten the airship, went back to Narsh, and found out that we need to go to the cave of... or to the sealed cave. Though actually, before we do that, we are going to do Mog's Grand Tour. As in, we are going to get all of Mog's dances that are available in the World of Balance. Uh, which is the starting world. So, hold on, let me find a cave. Uh, there's a cave on the belt, so let's get Mog in our party. Terra, Mog, Lock, and we'll take Satan with us. Let's de equip everybody not in the party. Now, as I mentioned before, Mog learns um, his dances by fighting in a area that has the dance. Uh, let's or fighting in the dance's home realm, basically. Let's get him. Give him a hero ring, and the dance is mostly focused. Actually, we have Dragoon Boots because Mog uses spears, and spears deal double damage when jumping. Alright, now, actually, before we go. Alright, so we're gonna heal up a little bit. Okay, so let's go and start on the Grand Tour. Now, an interesting thing is, um, the airship drips while you're in the cabin, so the longer you're in there, uh, the more the airship drips. It's kind of a nice little touch they put in. But anyway, so we start off in the cave to Narsh, or, in, or rather in the cave on the belt, and what we're going to do is we're going to jump into the Serpent's Trench. So we're going to take another dip. Now this time we're just going to take the short path, so we're going to be going left twice instead of to the right, because there's nothing to get for us in the right caves anymore since we cleaned them out the first time we went through. Alright, so now it is time to get Mog's first dance. So Mog has just learned the Water Rondo, which is actually his most powerful dance um, in terms of just raw damage dealing capability. Oops, I'm gonna go left. Oh, Water Harmony. The original SNES version called it the Water Rondo. So we just need to get through the get through the serpent's trench so we can get to Nakia. I just realized I forgot to give him, give him all the Nesper. Oh, well.
Now, the level reset glitch that I used is both a good thing and a bad thing. It, it's a bad thing because um, everything in Final Fantasy, is, or everything, like all the damage calculations in this game, are based off of your level. So, lower level is actually bad because you take more damage, you deal less, and stuff like that. And saving's done. Awesome. Alright, but we're out of here, so it's all good. Fast forward. Okay. So let's go to a quick pit stop at the inn. So now that we're back at Narsh, the next thing we want to do is we want to circle back around to the uh, to the falls so that we can get back to the belts. Should probably give Molly an Esper so that he can start learning magic. Um, let's start him off with Sarah. Oh, okay. Also, um, off camera, I picked up these two Espers, Golem and Zona Seeker, at the auction house in Gador. The reason I did this off camera is because those two Espers are a pain in the neck to pick up due to the way Jador work or the auction house works, because it's random whatever they sell, and there is a dud item on the list, and it takes forever to get rid of it. Because the auction house is slow for how it works. Okay. So the thing, the way Mom's dances work is if he dances the, in the home terrain, it is always successful. And it works until the end of the battle. Or Mog's dance is similar to Gal's rage. That it works until the end of the battle or until he's killed. Um, and he's uncontrollable while he does it. If you do a non-home dance, uh, Mog has a 50% chance of stumbling. And if he stumbles, it's a wasted turn. And you get another chance to try again, like that. So you can try again the next time on his next turn. Try that again. There we go. When it succeeds, it overwrites the current terrain with the dance terrain. Now, if you dance in a terrain that Mog has not learned yet, um, he will not be able to learn the dance of that terrain. We also picked up a few, quite a few more spells since the last time I was on. Hmm, this guy's a good thunder. Did not realize that.
And as you can see, the Domo uh, or the Imperial Fort is no longer at this location. But we want to fight here anyway because it's a desert terrain. Now we can't actually go into Domo right now because if we do, there's an Imperial Guard at the gate at the gate that'll just turn us away. And there's nothing we can get there yet, eh? into the Phantom Forest. Now, since we've already beaten uh, the Phantom Train, we don't actually need to fight it again. Uh, so we won't have to go through that whole segment again. See, we're already we're already out without having to go through the whole phantom train sequence again. Ooh, lagging. Okay. So now we go back to the falls. And we jump again. And we're already back at the belt. get back down to the cave on the belt so that we can pick up our airship and get out of here.
Okay. And now we're back at the airship. Okay, so there's still two more dances that we can get uh, in in this half of the game. So let's go over to Zozo to get the next one. Because I could have much easier gotten over here by just flying to the right instead of to the left, but eh. Where's the plan now? There is one last dance to obtain before we continue on, so... First, let's... So... And the last dance we get is the Cliff Dance, uh, which we can actually encounter fairly easily in just a moment. right on over to here, which you might recognize as Mount Colts. Right, we just need to run around to the encounter an enemy here. Should be an enemy in this section. No, let's try going inside. Yes, I am overkilling much. Now, see, that was not a new dance because that was underground. I have to be out here on the uh, on the cliffs, like in the grassy area with the sky out above, to be considered in the new terrain. So those are all the dances that we can get at this point in time. Um, there is still one more dance, but we can't get that until the second half of the game. So we'll save that for a little later on. Now, let's see. Next thing we want to do is we want to... Let's show you why you don't go back to the Empire Stronghold. So when we last left here, you remember, we pretty much trashed the Mitotech Research Facility and we um, ran the hell away. Yeah, see that thing? This is why we don't actually want to uh, go back into Vector. Hang on, let me draw the save outside real quick. Meet the Guardian. This thing is a weapon class boss monster. Um, you literally cannot do anything to it. Watch what happens.
you cannot hurt it. But it can surely hurt you. The only thing you can do is run the hell away. Because as you notice, it just kind of one-shotted poor Locke, and if Terra didn't have all the that glitched health of hers, she would have also gotten one-shotted. Now that we've got all of our fun stuff, let's go and advance the plot. We'll get ready to start advancing the plot. So as I mentioned, um, we are now off to go to the cave of, uh, or the sealed cave. So let's get Edgar equipped up. Good to go for the next segment. And that, I, and that little bit of time wasting actually gave us just the right amount. So we're going to run through here real quick. Now we never went over here before. If we, if you tried going here before this scene, uh, there would be the place would be crawling with soldiers, and if you encountered any of them, it would be just like Vector would send you back to the starting location. Now you can go in here, but there's nothing you can do in here yet. As you can see, the door is locked, and you can already see there's some treasure chests in there. We want to come back here later. But first we have to do some stuff. So what we need to do is we need to go up here and around. out here. And now we are about to enter the sealed cave, so I'm going to go ahead and split off the video at this point, and when I come back we will take on the sealed cave. See you in a bit.